it's interesting in the beginning of the experience he said he was on his way to meet his younger brother which was what about 40 kilometers away sure yeah okay it's interesting to note okay you have the four levels mainly and so you might say that's the distance between the real you and the personal self so he had to travel to get there you might say we use that idea and then go from there so the experience is is as uh, you know demonstrating itself objectively okay so he had to go you might say if we use up and down go down four levels into the physical to get his little self and to bring it over to Miriam you see see how that mm-hmm. complies yes Mm-hmm. And the four, number four is foundation or whatever, but it's also square. So that's like the literal self. So it all implies itself. So, no, it's a very simple experience. And this is where we, uh, you know, we decide to do this and we decide to bring ourselves forward. We decide to step up. And uh, again, uh, he, I guess, in the experience, he is a little late. So, uh, Paying attention also implies, but he did get there, the old saying, better late than never. A lot of things go on with old saints, and so again, Marion was there for her. But it's all about recognition. So these things that we've come to know, now we see what they really mean, not what we think they mean or what we've been told. Now it's about learning to recognize and making sense of them and sorting them out what what makes sense to utilize and what doesn't so again we don't have to carry things that don't make sense and we always have the opportunity to see more in other words see beyond creation and see what is more possible that you can bring into creation you see that's the fun part that's the challenge I like doing that I create everything I do. So anybody can do this. And we can all stand real with each other. Now we have real agreement. Now we're cooking. Dwayne, uh, uh, this this experience is that of uh, Oliver, who uh, seems to be a new entrant, a new 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 friend. who recounts that uh, in the first dream uh, he found himself in prison and uh, uh, when he was released from prison uh, so he realized that uh, um, uh, the the bank uh, where he was working uh, at the bank where he was working there are some 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 uh, colleagues there who who engaged in this machination for him to uh, to uh, go behind the bars? So he decided that he would never talk to them again when he uh, when he left prison, and there were some sort of enemies to him. Uh, he had made up his mind about that, and then uh, again he had another uh, a cont- as a continuation of the experience. Um, he went back to the same uh, bank and uh, the very persons whom he uh, whom he thought uh, were involved in his uh, incarceration uh, were talking to him and uh, uh, he was even uh, replying and uh, they were happy Uh, he was happy uh, even talking to them, even though he had declared them enemies. So he doesn't uh, quite understand how that comes about. And uh, in the second dream, um, uh, he says uh, he had often wondered whether he was doing the new song well. So in this uh, dream experience, um, he met a, a, a he seemed to have been watching a, a, a woman on a on a large screen, like a, on a television uh, a program, and uh, the woman was uh, teaching. The lady was teaching 
uh, on how to sing uh, the, the new song. So it is then that he realized that uh, he was after all not doing it uh, badly. So he got a confirmation of how to do the new song correctly uh, on TV in the uh, in the in the real side experience. So that is what he says. No, that's excellent. Uh, the first part. Uh, okay, so he starts off in prison. And then the idea of the bankers, what's, okay, I'm just, I want to get this right here, so I kind of get it, but uh, uh, the idea of the bankers, these were people he knew or he worked in a bank, or what's the idea here? Yep. He worked yeah. in a bank, was that it? Yes, and uh, it seems uh, those were the, the people who connived uh uh, for him to go to prison. Oh, okay. Well, again, uh, there's, uh, you know, the experience is showing him, uh, you know, what is taking place. And then after the end of the experience here, he has a relationship with him. In other words, it's kind of like this. We'll just say the bankers, uh, you know, are his... Eka's friends, okay, as an example, all right? He was in the corporation, right? Uh, uh, let me ask. Uh, Olivier, est-ce que tu as été dans Ekanka? Oui, je venais de là. Okay, yes, he's, uh, he's just from the corporation. Yeah, so in other words, let's just say the bankers are like his corporation friends, and he recognizes them now. He doesn't want anything to do with them because... Uh, probably like most of us that, uh, you know, we met certain things at the time and, uh, you know, many times our friends convinced us, oh, this is the way you want to go or whatever. So uh, now he unconsciously put himself into prison. Now with the new you, he's waking up th to the fact that he was in prison and his real awareness is recognizing that this these people had something to do with it, okay? So at first, he doesn't want to have anything to do with them, but later on he recognizes that, his real awareness recognizes that uh, it's all part of it too. It's all okay. We're not here against anybody or the corporation or anything. We're just, you know... We're just trying to show people how to wake up so that we can all get along, you see. So it's not about us being Eckes or anything anymore or Christians or whatever. It's about waking up that we're all beings uh, of light, who are real beings of real light, and that we can shine brighter than the sun. So, again, he you look at the stages. It's basically one, two, three. He's in prison. He doesn't like these people, then all of a sudden it's all okay. So you, you see the stages he's going through, and it's all okay. So he recognizes now what's going on through the process he's been through. Now he needs all this experience to recognize what really has no value or what you might say what isn't real so that now he can recognize what is real. So the next experience is, is that... You know, he's considering the new you, and there's really no way, wrong way to do it, but there always are, you, you can always make a better choice, you see? So it's like making a sandwich, you know, first you just put something on the bread and you stick it together, but as time goes on, you realize, oh, gee, I can, you know, I can make it like this or I can do it like that. It applies to everything. So, yes, there are ways that you can creatively uh, make the new you more fun for you uh, and uh, you might say more essential but you know it's like anything it's like a child walking it's like a baby walking you know what is the right way to take the next step uh, it really doesn't matter because this is where again life is an isness so you just do the best you can and it's okay, and little by little, life shows up, and it shows you, oh, okay, try this. You see? So life is always on, and there's always going to be that next moment where life shows you. So when you just do what you can, 
uh, life shows up, and all of a sudden, you know, it's like the parents, you know, as the child is learning to walk, the parents step up and take the child by the hand and, you know, kind of lead them on. And this is how life is. And so as we just simply make the effort, life steps in. So this is where eventually you don't have to overthink things. You be creative in your own way, but at the same time you see the bigger picture. The best part is when you let life show you. And this is where I wrote in here in the Skype uh, seen, recognize, recognize, and perceive. So you go through these phases, but eventually you recognize how to perceive the silent isness because it always is. And you might say that it will always convey to you in its own way, you know, whatever you need, you go beyond even asking for things. You just stand real with it. And it always is. It supports you. This is so cool to where we don't have any, eventually the point comes where you don't have any maintenance anymore with bodies. You surpass the bodies. You become awesome. So, again, but it's going through the steps. So, he, you know, he's going through the steps here. And he's seeing the bigger picture. And he's getting a better idea of the new you. We go through this process. So, he's fine. He's doing great. You know, and he's always the decider. Uh, you know, how big the adventure will be, he decides that. Yeah, Dwayne, uh, this is a, a, a new friend, a new new friend, seems. And uh, he asks why they are, uh, there are other life levels after the seventh uh, life level. Uh, which is already in the in the in the in the real universes. Uh, why should they be? Why, why are they other levels again? Because it's 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 uh, assumed that you've already arrived, for you're already out of creation, and uh, and he he wonders why uh, uh, there are other levels uh, beyond that. And uh, he wants to know whether everyone who is on that, who is uh, uh, within the, the real universes, uh, from the seventh plane, and uh, uh, I don't know whether it is, yes, upwards, whether they are all uh, real guides. So everyone who wants to know whether, if everyone who finds himself from the seventh plane onwards is a real guide, what? Yeah, Dwayne. Okay, first of all, the seventh level is just, uh, it, it's a real position uh, aside from what we've come to know as creation. You know, again, we will, creation will, you might say, always be a part of us until we decide it isn't. And there really are no levels, so to speak, in the real universes because it's all recognition. And so what Paul, uh, you know, described was different positions that he recognized on his journey, but it's endless. And so uh, he was to describe something, so it's kind of like that. And the real guides, yes, anybody can be a real guide once they've recognized that position. It's just like, and it's a choice. Uh, you know, again, each each individual uh, that uh, you might say enters that area, they decide. You know, in other words, you're always the decider. You must always decide. And so some... Uh, uh, you know, have their real position. They have they've positioned themselves in the real universes, and some they they uh, you know they bring themselves into creation to do whatever. And this is all a choice. Like all of us, we all chose to come here. We all chose to do this. And I see more so myself what I'm deciding and choosing. And probably for the longest time, or it can be forever. I may stay in creation because, again, it really doesn't matter. At a certain point, it doesn't matter. 
And just like the experience of the previous one where the fellow was in prison, it's the bankers and, you know, he didn't like them, now it's all okay. See, at a certain point, it's like it's all okay because it's all of life. It's the adventure. So, uh, you know, it's like here. Anybody could be a teacher if they want to be. You know, it's a choice, but everybody is not a teacher, but everybody has that potential. So it really doesn't matter. So it, it's however, uh, you know, each person sees it. So, again, what's important, yes, we, we get these views, but really what's important is what we decide. And what really has not come across is, is that you must decide every moment. You must, it, it is your life every moment now. You are the decider and this is where people have become passive, and this is where they allow themselves to be a prisoner of others. And that is, is that looking to the master and looking to gods and stuff like this, looking to someone like that in that particular way is, uh, you know, it's waiting for them to decide for you. And here, what we do is, we make the decision, we decide to stand real, we decide to step up. You see? And it's not looking to the guides to decide for you. That was like looking to your parents to decide. Well, that took place at that time. But when you grew up enough to, you know, leave your parents, you were the decider. And yeah, once in a while you call up on them and it's like, oh, gee, dad, mom, I, I'm, I'm going to get married. Should I get married or whatever? So, you know, you, you go through these funny situations and, you know, at times uh, you're going to ask life, etc., uh, you know what to do so uh, again uh, the idea of uh, gee is everybody a real guide well you know even the real guides decide what they're going to do they decide the experiences that they're going to give each person you know accordingly and it doesn't always come out uh, like you want you know so and you know Claudia here is a good example you know, all the years in the corporation and then uh, into Darwin's things for six years. But she needed that experience and wondering what was going on. And it was a long time. It was a huge uh, persistence for her to keep going. And finally, she comes to the new presentation. Well, even though that was a long time, she needed that to be able to eventually see what's taking place now and to have the motivation so again we all go through a lot yeah this is where yeah this is a big choice this is the hard choice and so but whatever a person wants to do here or there whatever it's a choice you make the choice it's up to you now you decide what is it that you want uh, for yourself and when I decide something uh, it's not about me. Again, I've said it many times. There is no me. It's about everybody. It's about everything. So there is always something. Uh, what I see for myself is there is always something that is not seen. And what is it that I'm not seeing that I want to see? You see? But that's up to me to decide to do that, to see that. And just like in school. When the teacher gives the assignment, you decide how you're going to do the assignment. The, the teacher does not decide that. See? So, uh, yeah, it's along those lines. And this is where, this is really what the new presentation is. It's, you know, that's the risk taker position, just like Miriam. Again, Miriam is the great, uh, you know, she's the great example. You are the great example. You step forward, you're taking on this challenge. You know, you're dealing with it, and it's a lot. And you know what? Whatever comes to you, you can handle it. You can make sense of it. This is so cool. So, But you must decide. Each person must decide. And this is, this is where people are per perplexed. They've come from these different systems where things were basically decided. They had a routine. They had techniques. They had all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. You see... We're not doing chakras anymore. We're not doing the third eye. We're not doing all this stuff anymore, all these routines. You don't need it because it's the whole of life. In the whole of life, where is a chakra? Does the sun have a chakra? You know, see, these things don't mean anything anymore. But they do 
to people that want routines and want to be told what to do. So yeah, this is a big step. This is a huge decision, huge choice for a person to make. That now, now it's you making all the decisions and facing those decisions and recognizing the decisions you're making and what do those equal and how do you make sense of that for the whole of life. Well, that's a big, that's a, that's a big deal. You see, that's a big adventure. And so that's where we are. So